Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me today at Wynette's Paper Crafts. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this cute little kit in which you have an area to hold your needles, and it's on a magnetic sheet. You've got an envelope to hold some embellishments or applique. There's a little felt piece to hold your sewing needle and a little notebook. So what we're going to do to start out with is coffee staining some designer series paper. You will take four to six cups of hot water, two to three tablespoons or four tablespoons of instant coffee, dissolve it, put it in a big glass pan, dip your designer series paper in it, put it in an oven at 325 for five to six minutes and you have your coffee stained paper. So this is the paper afterwards and I love the feel of it. And do you see it just kind of tones back the color a little bit. Takes away a little bit of that whiteness. And last night, I coffee dyed a lot of paper for projects. So these are just lined paper that will go into a junk journal. This is plain notebook paper, and some of them I put a doily on top of them. It also dried out the doily that I'll be able to use. These were just uh, some cupcake holders that I'll be able to fold in half and have a tuck spot in them. Gives a lot of texture. This is just some tracing paper. And again, the feel of it is fantastic and I love the crinkliness of it. These were like a real thick glassine envelope. And I'm going to put them in journals for pockets, just some book page, and some hymns for Christmas. So what I do to get rid of the coffee smell from my paper is I take one of these little things that you would get at a car wash and I... Just set it in the middle of all my papers and have them in a bag. And then I rotate it and after a few days, the coffee smell will go away and the smell of whatever uh, thing that you've got from a car wash will be the smell. So let me show you what we're making today. Lately, I have been on quite a kick for vintage looking things and I do a lot of sewing besides my paper crafting and so I needed something to hold my needles in. So my original one was only two and a quarter by four and a half and so I redesigned it to make it larger. Now this one is three and a half by six and you can see here I'm doing a little bit of slow stitching. You can look at other YouTube videos on what slow stitching is, but this piece will go into a junk journal or some kind of crafting journal. But like I said, this little kit is three and a half by six inches. It is using coffee dyed designer series paper. And this little area on the right hand side has a magnetic sheet that holds my needles. And then it tucks right into that little pocket there. There is a little felt piece there that I could put my needle into. There's a little notebook for jotting down notes. There is a glassine envelope to hold any kind of little bits and bobs that I'm working on, whether it be appliquing or uh, adding slow stitching to a piece of quilting batting. There's a little envelope there. 
There's also a little tuck pocket in the front there. Now, in the front, I also have a magnetic pair of scissors. I think it's so cute that you could put your needle on as you're uh, adjusting your hoop if you are cross stitching. And it closes up with Velcro dots. And it fits into my sewing bag quite nicely. So it's a nice little travel kit. So this is what you will need. One piece of 12 inches by six inches, coffee dyed designer series paper. And what we're going to do is score it at two and a half and at six and then I'm going to rotate it and score it again at two and a half. So two and a half, six, rotate it around and score again at two and a half. Then you're going to fold and burnish those score lines. And then what we're going to do is corner round these edges. And I'm going to bring in my detailed trio punch to do that. And you're just going to slide it in and punch. And then I'm going to bring in my one and a half inch circle punch and I'm going to punch some thumb notches on both of these sides here. So I'm going to just eyeball it and line it up about center and punch out a thumb notch and then on the other side too. So now I'm going to make my envelope which is five inches by three inches and I'm using glassine but you could also use vellum. So what you will need is a piece of seven by seven square and you're going to score it at two and three fourths so punch and score then rotate it around and do the same thing two and three fourths punch and score then you line up this score mark here, right along that edge there. Punch and score. Rotate it to the other side. Line this up right there and also this little line here with that score mark. Punch and score. And then we're going to round off these corners. So what I have done is folded and burnished all of my score lines. I've added double-sided tape here and here and then here and here. Now here is where 
this will go but i didn't want this to flap up so i've also added it there so what i'm going to do is release the other side of it and fold up the envelope to close it So what I've also done is added double-sided tape here because that's where our envelope is going to be adhered. Now it's right at this score line. So you can see there's the score line and that is where I'm going to put the envelope. So I'm going to stand up and kind of really get over it so I make sure I'm sorry if my head's in the way but I want to make sure I get this right there you go and see so you get it folds over Ooh, but I put my double-sided tape there and I didn't need it there oh shoot I hope I can pull it off So I was able to save it and I was able to pull up the double-sided tape and remove it and cut it off where I didn't need it. Thank goodness this was glassine. Had it been paper, it would have ripped, but because glassine is slick, I was able to peel it up and pull it off. So I'm gonna remove each of these sides and then lay that little pocket down. So there, I've got this little pocket in here. My glassine envelope is adhered to this side. And then I also have double-sided tape over here to put this pocket down. I'm gonna release the backing off of it. And then lay this down. And so there is our little kit holder, needle holder. So now we're gonna be decorating it. So I bought these little charms, I believe at Joann's, and I've got a couple. One is a pair of scissors, and here is a ruler, and then I've got these tiny, tiny little magnets that I believe I got off of Amazon. So I'm going to glue the magnet using this E6000. I guess this is a very, very good and strong glue. So I'm going to set those little scissors and the ruler aside and let those magnets dry. Now I'm going to show you a little tip that I got from another YouTuber. These little rubber toppers <clears throat> are what you would find in the knitting section of, like, I picked these up at Joann's. And they're just little silicone rubber toppers for knitting needles. But another YouTuber told me about them to put on top of your glue to keep it from drying out. And I must tell you, it is working fantastic. 
I know you guys have probably seen me struggle with this little thing. It's it's beautiful, but it's it's heavy. Uh, my glue falls out. I'm constantly trying to figure out where the hole is to put it back in. So I just wanted to let you guys know about these. They work fantastic. So that's that. You can pick them up at Joann's. And I recommend the small ones. I think these large ones are a little bit too large unless you have really big glue bottles that you're using. Okay, I'm going to set those aside. <clears throat> and I'm going to bring in our paper trimmer. And we have... A piece of three and a half by three and a half coffee dyed DSP for a tuck spot and a three by three piece. And so what you're going to do is cut them on the angle to create a triangle. And the best way to do that is line up your points right in your track. Then lay down your blade in the middle, not on one of the edges. Because if you start at one of these edges, it it will tear the, the paper. So there's one triangle. And we'll do this one. Then you're going to bring in your scoreboard and you're going to score at a quarter inch on one side and then a quarter inch on the other side also. Sorry, my hand gets in the way. On both of those pieces. So now I have folded and burnished my score lines on each one of those triangles. And I'm going to bring in my paper snips here. I think you can see a little bit better here. So right where those corners intersect, I am going to snip off a little edge there. And then they will fold in a little bit easier. Then I'm going to turn it over and snip off these pieces here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, on the other piece, excuse me. So what I've gone ahead and done is on two other pieces that are exactly the same pattern, I have added double-sided tape to both of these edges. And so we're going to go ahead and lay them down in the middle of our little kit here. You're going to put your larger one at the bottom and you want to make sure that you're steering away from the score lines. And the, this is a nice little tuck pocket. You can put some embroidery thread in there. And now for this top one here, I have a piece of two by two felt, or you can use a quilting batting. And I'm just going to lay that in there. You could also put something else in there as a little tuck. But I'm going to put some adhesive here on the back. Not 
all the way up here because I want to be able to lift this up to help guide my needle in there. And I think I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue. So I just want it on this corner here. And I'm just going to kind of slide that in there just like that and then lay it down. So the magnet on my scissors has dried and so I want to attach my other magnet to the back side. So this is where my scissors, my front scissors, are going to lay at about there. So I'm going to hold that there and then turn it over and if you just drop your magnet, it will land where it needs to. Um, I think that's a little bit high, so I'm going to move it over. I want it at about, I think about there. So that's where I need to glue my magnet. So what I'm going to do is just take a little pencil and draw where I need to add my glue. I'll take that off and I'm gonna bring in that E6000 again. I think it's a really strong glue. And add a drop right there. Now we're gonna be covering this magnet up. So I think that's good. And then again, I'm going to just drop my magnet. I think it just kind of goes where, oops, no, not, that isn't where I want it. <laughs> oh, shoot. Let's see. I think what I'm going to do is, let's see, it needs to go laid down like this. So I'm going to just lay that one first right where I need it to go. Where I had decided, there we go. And then bring this one back here and there. Yeah, that's good. That's where it needs to land. So I'm going to cover that up. And what I've done is I have a piece of six and a half by one and a quarter coffee dyed uh designer series paper and I want to cover that magnet up and I cut it a little bit longer than what I need because I want it to go to the edges so I can just trim that off to hide that and I think I'm going to bring in my beacons three-in-one glue is that the side I want yeah And so I'm just going to add it to the back. You see how it lets that little rubber thing, that little topper just makes it so much easier for covering up your glue. I'm going to put quite a bit here. I'm heavy handed when it comes to the glue. I love this little thing. That's fantastic. And so I'm just going to lay it here. And all it really needs to do is cover that magnet. So I'm just going to line it up there. Press it down. Then if I turn it over. There we go. And then I can just trim that off there. Oh, perfect. That looks good. And see, that covers that magnet there. So now we're going to make our little notebook that'll fit into this little tuck pocket here. And all it is, is about six pieces of two and a half by two and a half copy paper for a notebook that is lined. 
And then I also have a piece of two and a half by two and a half, very vanilla coffee dyed cardstock for the back of the notebook. And that gives it some strength. You just lay those on top of each other. And then I stapled it. And then this is a piece of coordinating designer series paper and it is two and a half by one inch and I've scored it at a half an inch and that's just going to fit over the top just to make it look a little bit nicer there. Just like that. So I'm going to glue that down. So now I want to decorate this area right here. And what I've done is I have stamped this Love What You Do. I apologize, but this is a retired set from Stampin' Up! But I just love that saying. It's It just is perfect for this. And what I've done is I have stamped it using Pear Pizzazz one of my coordinating colors here and then I used the everyday label punch and I have punched it out and I had stamped that on a very vanilla cardstock that was coffee dyed so that is going to go right there but I do want to um, darken up the edges a little bit so I'm going to bring in my soft suede and um, ink around that just a little bit. So now I have inked the edges up here and you see the difference between the two? This is exactly the same paper and stamped with exactly the same color, but when you ink around the edges, it just really makes that pop. So that is going to go there. And what I've done is I've tucked under the flap of the envelope. Oop. I'm going to have to cover that up because I don't want that to show through. I'm going to have to put another layer on top of that. But anyway, um, I folded this over just to give the flap a little bit more strength. So I'm going to glue that uh, edge down there and also cover that up with another piece of uh, paper. So I've added another piece of cardstock to the back of that stamped area, and I have added double-sided tape to the back of it. I did glue down this little flap here to make it a little bit stronger, and I also inked up the edges with my soft suede. So I'm going to remove this double-sided tape here and um, adhere this down to that envelope. And I'm just gonna center it right here. And then I also want a little um, embellishment on both sides. Now, I do remember uh, that I've done a tutorial on this little book here. <clears throat> and it is a holder for all of my die cut pieces that from Paper Pumpkin Kits or extra die cuts that I have cut out and didn't use. And I have it sectioned off by color. So I believe I'm going to bring in some browns and these were little extra embellishments from our last paper pumpkin kit and so I'm going to pull out two of those and use those on this envelope. 
So if you want to know how to make that, there is a tutorial on that. I'm going to bring this in and just add those just to give a little bit more color there. And I'm going to bring in my ink blending tool again with just a little bit of that soft suede just to kind of darken up the edges. And I'm going to glue those down. And then our piece of magnetic sheet is five inches by two and three fourths. And I can go ahead and just slide that in over here. And that is what our needles will stick to. And that also gives a little bit of strength to the back of this. So I'm gonna let that dry for just a minute. Now to de decorate the front of our little kit, I have brought in the Crafting Forever stamp set. And again, I apologize that this is retired, but I love this sentiment, do something creative every day. And I stamped it on some coffee dyed vanilla, very vanilla cardstock and pear pizzazz. Now these, dies are in in the current catalog they are stitched shaped dies and i've used this little middle one here and i have die cut it out and as you can see there's little bitty stitch lines so i'm going to take some variegated floss and stitch around that to add that to my card so this is going to go on the front of the little kit and what I've done instead of tying a knot and making bulk on this little piece I've just taped it down and what I'm going to do is just do a running stitch every other one. Now if you don't feel like sewing it you could just take the pear pizzazz marker and just mark every other one and it would look just fine but i like sewing so <laughs> i'm gonna sew it so i'll be back with you uh, after i've done that so like i said i'm just doing a running stitch every other one so you just go in the back up and then down the next one. And then that is just, like I said, every other one stitched with this variegated thread. And then what I'm gonna do is tie it off by bringing it up through there and around into a knot. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. And then just trim that off. Take my needle. Open up my little kit here. Put my needle in there for safekeeping. And then I'm going to glue this on to the front of it here. So now I want to decorate the front of this little envelope a little bit and to give it some strength. Now what I have is two different, uh, and again, unfortunately retired, stamping up washi tape, but you can use any kind of washi tape that you might have that would coordinate with it. Then I also have a glue stick, which is good if you have a little bit of a problem with your washi stick 
your washi tape sticky. So I think I'm gonna go with the green first. And I'm gonna pull off the amount I think I'm gonna need and just tear it off. And then what you do is you just lay it on top of your glue stick. And as you pull it through, you hold your index finger down and it will get glue all over the back of that washi tape. And then I'm just gonna bring it up. I think I'm gonna stand over it so I can see better. Ooh, did I not cut that long enough? I didn't. Huh, I thought I had. I'm gonna set that to the side and do it all over again. I want it to be long enough. And then I'm also going to take this one too. And if you didn't have any washi tape, you could always just put a piece of cardstock there to strengthen that up. Just gonna turn it around and bring my fingers in here. Push it down. And then I'm gonna trim off the excess here. And see that strengthens that and gives it a little bit more color there and I could add something there I'm gonna have to think about that for a minute and then I'm going to need a couple of velcro dots now I have this 3 8 of an inch one which is really small and that's gonna be to close this envelope flap here and then I have two larger ones which are five eighths of an inch and they are going to go on both sides over here to close the whole thing down so let me put those on I have my small one here to keep the envelope closed and then I have my two larger ones here to keep the whole thing shut and then the final thing is my usual little created by Juanette on the back so I wanted to give a little shout out to Christina Hicks and her YouTube channel is Mixed Media and Junk Journals. She lives in Australia and she recently did a slow stitch album, which was fantastic. So check out her YouTube channel. And as I was finishing this up, I remember I said, oh, I think I need to put something there. Well, in the current catalog, there is this ribbon, and it is very vanilla. And I wrapped some just around this little card. Used the detailed trio punch to round off the corners and to decorate these. Then I used the same washi tape, the one that I had cut too short, and I put it on there. 
And I'm just going to slip that in there. And then that way, whomever gets this little kit will be able to use that lace. Now, I didn't want it too far up because then it would interfere with the magnet from the scissors. So the magnet is down there. And that's why I rounded that off. So here is my completed little sewing kit for a gift for someone. Again, you have the envelope that you can put something in here. You've got a place to put your sewing needle. You have a notebook. You've got a place to put your needles. It closes with Velcro dots. And then there's also a little tuck pocket here. So here's both of them. I have one more to make to give to someone. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Again, for the current supplies that are in the catalog, if you need them or anything from the catalog, please let me know. Here is my 24-7 online stamping up shop. You can get anything that you need. If you need a catalog, please let me know. And again, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you guys next Monday. Bye!